Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm. Well, we're back in the United States of America. The annual road trip with myself and Mark from Shannon's. We land in LA, we've got 10 states to drive across as we make our way to Pennsylvania. Over these next few episodes, we're gonna bring you some of the highlights of the Hershey Swap Meet and the classic car show there, and some very cool things in between along the way. But today, we are at Bakersfield here in California because Mark, well, he's bought himself another car and you're about to see it on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Another project uh, behind me here is the 1960 Chrysler Imperial and uh, I guess a lot of enthusiasts can probably identify with, uh, you know, you go and buy these projects, you know, you're going to restore them one day. Well, here's one of my uh, one day projects behind me. It's uh, a pretty rare car. They only built 999 of these uh, Imperial LeBarons. Uh, the LeBaron was the top of the range model and the Imperial was the top of the range Chrysler back in uh, 1960. And uh, it's one of my favourite cars in terms of styling. I love the, the big fins and uh, the front grille, and uh, it'll make a nice uh, uh, addition to the 59 Imperial that I've got over in Murray's uh, that's also a restoration candidate as well. So, you know, I might have bitten off more than I can chew, but uh, I'm sure there's a few enthusiasts out there that can identify with that. The thing that appeals to me about the car the most is the styling. Uh, as I say, the, the fins, the taillights, uh, the front grille, the whole car really I think looks fantastic. Really uh, impressive design. Uh, my plans for it, well, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna put a time uh, limit on it, but uh, I wanna fully restore the car. Uh, I think it's worth restoring. Uh, they've built very few of these, so uh, it's a very rare car. And you don't see many of them coming up for sale anymore these days, so uh, it's gonna be a rare sight on the road once it is restored. Um, it's got a 413 V8 uh, engine in it, uh, the push button, Torque flight automatic transmission. Uh, they came with power windows, power seats, uh, even the uh, the vent windows are electric as well. Uh, air conditioning, which is also ducted to the rear, and uh, all the features you could think of that you know you'd expect in a luxury car. So uh, it competed with the Cadillac of the time and also the uh, the Lincoln. So they were the the three top of the line vehicles uh, from you know Chrysler, GM, and Ford. I guess. Uh, it's probably all about priorities, but uh, as you can probably see, the car needs a full restoration, but it has got, uh, <laughs> the rims have all been restored and it's got new white wall tires. So it might be a little bit like Christine, it might start restoring itself, which would be good. Save me a few dollars. Uh, the rear tail lights are quite interesting. These to be called uh, sparrow strainers. And uh, when you have a look at them, you'll probably understand why if you're traveling along at speed and a, and a, and a sparrow seems to be flying the other direction. It, it's, not, it's not in for a good time. <laughs> what I'd say though, is if you are you know, an enthusiast and you have that dream car, you should go after it and, and uh, you know, restore, I think restoring the car and bringing it back to its former glory is, you know, is part of why we do this and it's part of our passion. So uh, in terms of seeing the car completely finished, maybe uh, stay tuned for the Classic Restos 2026 edition. <laughs> make our way across the United States of America 2019 of course thanks to Shannon's it's wonderful traveling the great American highway system the highways the byways and what have you which also uh, gives you the opportunity to leave the main interstates and of course come into these uh, old towns that uh, once really flourished with with larger populations we're here at uh, Lordsburg in New Mexico this particular town here fairly deserted um, compared to how it would have been once upon a time. It was founded back in 1880 
with a population these days of around 2,800 people. It's pretty cool to look around and see original buildings still just left remaining as they have always been. It's very cool to check out old towns such as this place. Moving our way east across the magnificent United States of America, of course, thanks to Shannon's. It's about getting out and finding interesting stuff. Now, how are you feeling at the moment? Because I'll tell you what state I'm in. Right now, I'm standing in Missouri. And if I go here, it's Oklahoma. And on this side is Kansas. And that's what this stone monument represents, where the three big states meet. It was built back in the 1930s. It's tucked away here near the woods. I think it's pretty cool. And of course, St. Louis is well known for its famous gateway arch. This is interesting and it always fascinates me. The architect was Eero Saarinen, born in 1910 and he passed away in 1961, never seeing his masterpiece completed. Eero was responsible for the design of many iconic structures, featuring opulence and futuristic styling, such as the Washington Dulles International Airport. And the automotive tie here, you may be thinking? Well, Eero also designed the General Motors Tech Center in Detroit, as featured with Mike Simcoe on Classic Restos in the past. Eero Saarinen was an incredibly talented man, known for thinking above and outside of the square. Are you a motoring enthusiast? Does your current insurer understand your passion? At Shannon's, we're motoring enthusiasts, just like you. We understand the passion you have for your special car or bike. But did you know that Shannon's will also insure your daily drive, the car you drive every day? So if you're a motoring enthusiast, you've got to be with Shannon's. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. In 2020, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2020 Detroit tour with Fletch. What's this? Well, Fletcher's on the tools today. Um, how could I not enjoy the trip across the United States of America every year with Mark from Shannon's doing the episodes? Uh, as hard work as it is, it's always intriguing and interesting because we don't know what sort of car he's going to buy from year to year. Not only we don't know what type of car, it's got to make the trip too. So what a challenge to get a classic car and then drive three quarters of the way across the United States of America to Mark's shipper. Now the car behind us here is his purchase, his acquisition, uh, his uh, driving car for 2019 across the United States. It's a 1968 Chrysler 300, four-door, pillarless car. Of course, the, the big 440 up front. Uh, what we've had to do today is take the intake manifold off to fix an oil leak. And uh, you wouldn't read about where the oil leak's coming from. The valley pan uh, on these 440s, they've got like a little bit of a high rise intake and then they've, they've got a, a valley plate, a, a tin plate underneath them, uh, underneath that intake. Um, there was a massive hole in this plate. You could almost put your fist through. Why? How did that get there? Um, well, would you believe mice and their urine uh, while the car was sitting, uh, the, the mouse, 
the urine is just eaten through the plate, uh, so we've had to replace that today. This is also a history of an engine that, that hasn't had a lot of oil changes as well. We, we took the intake off and the plate and uh, it, was, it was pretty dirty on the inside. So chipping away as much as we can, the vacuum cleaner out, just trying to get rid of the, the sludge and build up over the years. So there's an extra challenge too. As you know, I like getting on the tools. I, I don't mind that. I have a workshop at my place and I'm only too happy to do stuff here uh, with Mark's car. Each year we do something uh, uh, to make it road worthy and um, yeah, that's part of the challenge as well. Being here in Ohio, some things usually get done to Mark's cars before we arrive. We uh, outs or Mark outsources to local mechanics in the area, which uh, is good. It, su it supports the trades here. Um, you know, cars need new gas tanks, they, knew, they need new exhausts, they need new brakes, cooling systems, the list goes on. And these are original cars most of the time that Mark buys. And of course, some of them say 50 years old. And as, as, as strong as they are, uh, the mechanical prowess of these vehicles, uh, when they sit around for decades in some cases, um, it, they're not worn out because of the amount of miles that the cars have done in their life. It's just the age that gets to the components. Interesting too what you find, uh, on the, the, the valley plate under the intake, there was this pad, uh, it was like a piece of uh, insulation pad wrapped in foil. Um, now that was, a, that was an original piece of equipment that actually kept the underside of the intake cool uh, to help stop vapor lock. This piece uh, has obviously had it, it's, uh, it fell to bits, but there's an original fitment of the vehicle. It runs well, it's got a, a long way to go. It's got to cross eight or nine states on its way to uh, San Francisco in, on this trip for 2019. So it's going to be a very interesting ride. So this year, 2019, on our trip across America, uh, the road trip, we've got this Chrysler 300 sedan, 1968 model. Uh, it's a pillless sedan, and uh, I love the look of the car. The concealed headlights, uh, the rear tail lights, the reversing lights look, look like, almost like rockets or, or jets. And uh, I've always really thought the 68 Chryslers uh, look particularly good. Um, they came in a variety of body styles. Uh, I guess the most common one would have been the two-door coupe. And uh, you can also get a convertible. But this one's a four-door sedan, so I guess it's for that family man that wanted the sporty look back in the late 60s. Wanted the Chrysler 300 sporty look, but had the practicality of a four-door family sedan. So that's what this car is here. Um, I bought it out of Detroit and uh, it had been uh, in storage for a long time. I think the ad, ad said that the last time this car was run, uh, Jimmy Carter was the president of the United States. So that's quite a while ago. Because it had been sitting, it did need quite a bit of work to get it back on the road. Um, on the plus side though, it didn't have uh, much corrosion in the body uh, underneath, particularly in Detroit where they put salt on the roads, that sort of thing. It was very good underneath, so that was a real plus. Uh, the paint scheme, you know, the red Duco, the white vinyl roof, the white interior, I think that really sets off uh, a big car really well. I always like that colour scheme on a big American car. So 440 V8, uh, the Torque Flight Auto Transmission, uh, it's got power windows as well, so it's quite a nicely equipped car for its time. So really looking forward to the uh, trip. Uh, Fletch and uh, Murray were working on the car, helping me out. So uh, we placed the, uh, the gasket for the intake manifold, so that had a gaping hole in it. Uh, I've never seen anything like that before in my life. Uh, but anyway, the car's running really well now, so uh, touch wood, it'll, uh, it'll be good for the whole trip. Well, as you know, Mark enjoys driving a classic car across the United States each year to his shipper. But as a collector, Mark also has cars in storage bound for Australia, and the variation is quite unique. So uh, this car behind me is pretty special. It's a 1959 Chrysler Imperial, and uh, it's a pretty amazing car. I, I purchased the car a few years ago from Murray, uh, around the same time, in fact, that Fletch bought his uh, 1967 Chrysler New Yorker. So he pulled it out of the barn at uh, Murray's place. And uh, this car had been, uh, it's got an interesting history. This car had been stored in a garage uh, since 1980. 
and uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's a very original car, uh, but it does need quite a bit of work just to bring it back up to, uh, up to spec so it can be used on the road. So it's a bit of a longer term project from my point of view, but uh, it's a beautiful emerald green. Uh, the interior is all original. Uh, the dashboard, there's no cracks, you know, all the fabric of the seats and all the materials all original, which is very unusual for a car from the late 50s. The car was uh, designed by Virgil Exner. He was the uh, head stylist for uh, Chrysler at the time, and he was responsible for the forward look. Uh, and that was really very avant-garde styling that really caught General Motors and Ford uh, sleeping at the time. In fact, uh, the General Motors uh, styling team saw the Chryslers uh, on display uh, or you know, in the Chrysler factory through the fence uh, one of the stylists went out in his lunch break and, and saw that and they rushed back to the styling studio at General Motors to actually redesign all the GM cars uh, that were going to be released in 59 because they were going to originally put warmed over 1958 models into the market and uh, they were pretty heavy dumpy looking cars compared to these Chryslers which were really you know, very avant-garde, beautiful sweeping lines, beautiful styling, the big fins uh, and just they really did capture the market at the time, they really were you know, very advanced. So Virgil Exner was the, the head designer who was responsible for that. I've removed the rear tail lights on the car because just they're very uh, vulnerable because they're on the end of the fins and uh, I just want to avoid any damage. So I've taken those off just for safe keeping. And uh, also when you look in the boot, it's pretty cool. Uh, there's a whole lot of old newspapers that go back, you know, to the early 70s and uh, it was pretty cool looking through those, even picking out some of the old car ads and things from back in the day. Um, so the plan for this car is, uh, you know, to have some work done on it over, a bit, over time, to get it up and running, to eventually uh, to join the collection. This 1959 Imperial that's behind me here, uh, my friend Mark, as, as you know, purchased from me. A car that's been in my collection a long time, had intentions of restoring it, just another project. But uh, when Fletch was here, I think in 2017, and bought his 1967 New Yorker from me, we had to move this car out of the building to uh, access his New Yorker to get it out. And uh, Mark had seen it and instantly fell in love with it. And even though I really didn't want to sell it, we ended up striking a deal, and, and it's now going to be his to restore, although it needs a fair amount of work to get it on the road. It's a great car. One thing a lot of people don't know about the uh, Imperials is they were from 1955 to 1975, they were actually their own division of Chrysler Corporation. So they weren't technically Chrysler Imperials, they were just Imperials. Um, car was built on its own platform, did not share frame, platform, anything with any other Chrysler product. It was all unique to the Imperials. Um, and they used the finest, finest parts and equipment and design in them, um, better than any of the other Chrysler Corporation cars. And it really made them a flagship for the company and uh, I'm glad to see Mark will be restoring it and getting back on the road as it's been it's been set up since 1980 and it's it's time to get it back going again. I'm amazed about the technology of the time. Under the hood lurks the 413. Now this was the predecessor to the Ram Chargers and of course the 426 Hemi beginning in 1966. The power of these 413s, you may remember seeing the cross rim intake manifolds with a four barrel carb either side of the rocker covers back in the early 60s. These things are quite astounding and they're not too far behind the legendary 440. Now, we're looking at 261 kilowatts of power in the metric conversion, equating to 350 horsepower, an amazing 637 newton meters of stump pulling torque, which propelled this car back in the day to a top speed of 122 miles an hour. I knew she was the one. The heart's going a million miles an hour, the mouth's dry. It's love, mate. Pure and simple. In 71, this was the fastest four-door car in the world. Back then, you could pick one up for a bit over four grand. Insurance? It's got to be Shannon's. No one knows your passion like Shannon's. 
And with our multi-vehicle discount, you can even cover your daily drive. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerymouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. As you know, uh, a lot of enthusiasts import cars from all over the world into Australia, enthusiast vehicles. And uh, the federal government ruling uh, in the past was that there was a cut-off point to January 1989. If you wanted to import a car that was newer than January 1989, you'd have to convert the car to right-hand drive if it was a left-hand drive vehicle. So as part of my role with Shannon's, I worked closely with the federal government to change that rule so we could make it a rolling 25 year rule. And I'm really pleased to say that the government's now confirmed uh, that the rule will change, uh, effective in uh, December 2019, uh, for, to a rolling 25 year scheme. And so that means that enthusiasts will be able to access uh, vehicles from all over the world uh, that are 25 years old, and that's a rolling scheme. So it really means that a new generation of uh, vehicles can be imported into the country for enthusiasts, younger enthusiasts who may also like, you know, the newer classic cars or the emerging classics as we call them. You know, like I've got this 96 Cadillac Fleetwood behind me, it's a good example. Once that car hits 25 years old, um, can then import that into Australia. So. You know, a lot of work was done behind the scenes with the government uh, on behalf of Shannon's and uh, I'm really pleased to say that it's paid off, so uh, it's really good news for enthusiasts. Meet Danielle Park, a born and bred local girl from Tiffin, Ohio, United States. At 16 years of age, at time of filming, Danielle has been driving for just six months. Danielle attends the Calvert Catholic High School, with her favourite subject being chemistry and colour guard, which is using the flag in a traditional American way, performing at the marching during fall season every weekend at football games. Danielle also enjoys sewing and fashion designing, and all of this is encapsulated around her being a 70s girl, appreciating almost anything from that era, well before Danielle was even thought of. Sister Christina shares the same blood when it comes to cars. You may remember in 2018, Christina featured on Classic Restos with her amazing 1958 DeSoto. And now it is time for Danielle to share with us her 1986 Chrysler 5th Avenue sedan featuring a 318 V8, a sumptuous interior and just over 100,000 miles on the clock. So about when I turned 15, I um, didn't know what car I was going to drive. It was about time to start thinking about a car. And like my whole family drove trucks and I didn't really want to drive a truck. So um, my dad had his eye out for a car I might like. So they always go to swap meets every year and car shows. So um, he went to Carlisle, Pennsylvania where he saw this Fifth Avenue, Chrysler Fifth Avenue, and he thought I might like it. So he sent me a picture and I found it beautiful. So I told him um, he didn't buy it. I was kind of hoping. <laughs> um, so it happened that um, the next car show um, in Hershey, Pennsylvania, he went to that and he ended up buying it for me. I, um, he didn't tell me that he was going to buy it. Um, he just brought it home, parked it in the driveway, and they gave me a gift, which was um, for my birthday, which was a keychain, a Hershey keychain, and keys attached to that. And they were keys to the Fifth Avenue. So here I am with my car. <laughs> So 
So I absolutely love the car because it's different and like most people, most people in my class, most people at my school have cars that kind of look the same and I've always wanted to stand out. So um, I love this car because first of all, I love the colors. Um, the black with the beautiful red interior, I've always, always loved that. That's the one thing that stood out to me. So I've always been a 70s girl. I might have been born a little too late. Um, I really enjoy driving um, classic cars, especially my car. I've gotten a lot of reactions to my car, um, especially going to a high school where everyone drives newer cars. Everyone loves my car. <laughs> um, they like it because it's different, just like I do. Um, and when I'm out driving it, people always <laughs> have some funny reactions to seeing a younger kid driving an older car. There's something about driving a classic car that I will always like. Um, it's, they look like art. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will always love driving classic cars. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos here in the United States of America. And on next week's show, there's more coming your way. And until then, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, and Pace Farm.